Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with American Resiliency. We're here with an up-to-date climate outlook for all of our friends in Wisconsin. Let me tell you, in the NCA4, Wisconsin was looking very strong. Some of the best potential destination territory in the country for people who are interested in a classic Midwestern climate with decent cool weather preservation in the summer and the winter. In March, I'm gonna be speaking at the Wisconsin Land and Water Conference in Green Bay. So. I figure I better comb through these updates, make sure I get everyone in Wisconsin the best info I can, both online and on the ground. This update goes out to all our friends in Wausau who are getting ready. Jay, keep up the good work. A little background for this update. When I founded American Resiliency in 2021, I started making these climate outlooks. I was calling them 2050 climate forecasts. In 2021, it seemed reasonable to think we'd be hitting 2C at mid-century. That was the consensus science. But, you know, that was then, 2023, as you know, you lived it. It's been a very weird year in climate. We hit 2C globally for a couple of days towards the end of 23. We've been very close to 2C a couple of days here in 24. It's likely that La Nina is going to get us down. It's going to buy us some time coming in in the end of 2024. But the, the consensus is in that in 2023, it was the first full year we spent over 1.5C, which you might remember is the threshold we were trying to keep below in the Paris Accords. So everything going on, it's gotta change our thinking. You know as well as I do that so far this year, it's pretty weird. This outlook that we're gonna have here, this is where we're gonna have a 2C outlook. This is what you should expect in Wisconsin at a global temperature of 2C, increase from baseline. So let's check out the challenge level for Wisconsin. You're gonna like it. So you know where to find the source material. This outlook information is all based on the National Climate Assessment. And I'm gonna tell you the number for any figure that I use. And if you're interested in it, come over to the website, click on chapters, go down to all figures, and you'll be able to find it by the number. Use the fifth National Climate Assessment because it represents the highest consensus science available. Your tax dollars paid for the development or review in this document. You deserve access to the information. We're gonna break it down for your state. American Resiliency, FYI, is the only nonprofit focused on communicating this information because by federal mandate, there's no comms money related to this document. So looking at national overview for changes at 2C, let's look at figure 1.14. We can see here that Wisconsin is in the higher change bands up in figure 1.14. Up in the north there, you're all expecting a total heat up of five to six degrees F. A lot of people, they think they're gonna be fine with climate change as long as they just head north. But as we dig through this information, you'll see it's more complicated than that. Uh, you know, the scientific community is learning a lot more about the Arctic amplification effect, why we're seeing such intense warming at the poles and how far down that amplified warming extends. The high change band in the map here, it conceals a lot of variation. You can see that if you look just at the Michigan video, there's a big difference in the projections for the UP and for the rest of the hand. Let's get some more details. Last time Wisconsin was in the sweet spot. Let's see if you are. So here we are with figure 2.11. This lets us look at projected changes in extremes. So like, is your summer gonna get crazy? Is your winter gonna go away? And overview here, Wisconsin, you look so good. I mean, check this out. You are mostly avoiding this big loss of cold that we expect to the east. And look, overall, summers, you're looking pretty light. Let's zoom in. Okay, here we are looking in, zoomed in at additional days over 95. Let's get this straight. You're not facing no change, but you're facing less change than most folks. This whole freaking state here, less than additional 10 days over 95 projected. Much of the state, the lighter color there, that's less than five additional days over 95 projected. If you like Wisconsin dairy, this is a good map. Traditional Wisconsin dairy, those cool summers, they're important for the cows, right? Any person who fantasizes about having like a traditional small holding, Wisconsin is one of the few places where traditional Northern type cattle breeds are still gonna be able to be comfortable and productive. Let's go check out warm nights. So zoomed in on the additional warm nights, additional nights over 70, Wisconsin is still looking super solid. You got three bands there, zero to five more warm nights in the lightest color, five to 10 and 10 to 15. You see there's like a warm night bubble over by Appleton. I think that the lake there is having an impact where it's gonna help keep heat and cool kind of more steady, right? The lake is like a buffer. And then you got a warm night bubble down towards the Illinois border. And look, if you are following the river, 
right here by the river, same thing where the water is going to have this buffering effect. It's going to keep the nights a little bit warmer in the summer. Wassa, I think you're just over the line on this map. You were in the lowest change band for daytime temps. I think you're getting poked by the tip of the 5 to 10 increased warm nights band. Probably about a week of additional warm nights in Wassa. So folks, these increased warm nights, they're going to be a big problem in a lot of the country. Down towards Milwaukee, it's going to be a notable phenomenon, even here in Wisconsin. If you got a couple of weeks in the summer where it's not inclined to cool down at night, that's going to mean increased energy demand, increased cooling demand, and it'll have the biggest impact on urban environments due to that urban heat island effect. You could see that impact on the map. And here, let's look at the bubble projected for downtown Chicago. Back to the map there. Look at that thing. Look at that. That's like a month more of warm nights for Chicago. Huge energy demand. If we look over here, the cities of the Wisconsin coast, we don't see those sort of big projections. I think Wisconsin's Lake Michigan coast cities are going to be very much increasingly attractive as we move through these next decade. Let's get more info. You know, from an agricultural perspective, this amount of nighttime warming is barely going to make a dent in your grain yields. Nighttime warming is going to have big agricultural and health impacts across America, particularly in the southeast. This outlook, you know, Wisconsin, you got some change, but it's really low compared to many states. And as we were going through those heat figures, I feel like the Door Peninsula really stood out. That's one of my favorite landscapes in the U.S. Lowest change bands for the summertime heating. Good news. So sweet. Let's look at winter. So here we're back in figure 2.11. We're looking zoomed in at loss of days below 32. So your loss of cold days, loss of freezing days. And look over the lake at Michigan. That's a problem, man. And this, it's like all fruit orchards where losing the chilling days is going to be a huge deal. It's really sad. Wisconsin, you're got, not getting hit nearly so hard as that. Most of the state, you're losing about three weeks of cold. As you get into that darker band, that's four weeks of cold you're losing towards the lake and down towards Illinois. It's a big loss. We got to admit it. It's not as big as we see on the eastern side of the lake as we might see elsewhere in the Midwestern region, but that's a shorter winter. Let's see if that shorter winter is also milder. We're going to go over to figure 11.3. All right, here's figure 11.3. You can see it's so big we can't see anything. So I made you all a side by side. Let's look zoomed in at Wisconsin looking at today and a 2C. All right, folks, here's the figure I made for you. This is just copy pasted little cuts out of that big 11.3. We can see here, the biggest change is gonna be right along the lake. You can see zone 7A coming in at 2C for lakeside cities in Wisconsin. But the rest of the state, you're almost entirely projected to stay at or below zone six. From my perspective, Zone six or below is where you want to be. I'm an Iowan. I like the cold and I like not being covered in bugs. Zone six is the line where you expect temps to really get down to zero, real zero, zero F actual cold. It's the cold you need to kill invasive insects, to reduce pests, to maintain some health in your landscapes. Wisconsin, these are milder winters than y'all are used to. You can see zone four is gone, but these are still recognizably Midwestern winters. To me, that implies an important thing. Wisconsin, you're maintaining a level of real winter here. I think we can mark you safe from tech bros. You know, you're looking good. You're an attractive destination for anyone who can tolerate an actual winter. But nobody wants what happened to Austin to happen to their town. And I don't think anyone who can't tolerate a winter is going to want to come to Wisconsin with this outlook. So that's good. Winter is where the change is coming for you all. You know, that average 5 to 6 degree warm up we looked at in the first figure, figure 1.14, it appears to be concentrated in winter warming. But Wisconsin's winters, they were so super cold, we can take a little heat and still be tough enough to provide defense. You can have rational hope that Wisconsin's going to hold on to some snow. If you look at the hand of Michigan, you can see the snow is not going to hold there. If you love winter, if you love winter sports, this is a very important outlook for Wisconsin. There is change coming, but the change in these projections leaves some room for preserving traditional lifeways and traditional landscapes. This is all good news. These projections are all very similar to the NCA4 so far. That's very good. I think we're getting more clarity here, though. I think this is a useful increase in detail. Let's check out projected changes to precipitation. 
All right, this is figure 210. You can see, Wisconsin, that you're in the 10% increased precipitation band. You're looking stable, the same at 2C and 3C projections. This is good news for anyone thinking about generational investment in flood control. Let's look at this next figure that's going to show us signals for extreme storms. All right, here's figure 2.12, projected changes to precipitation extremes at 2C of global warming. And what I look for in this complex figure is similarity across these three models. If something is lighting up in all three models, that makes me feel like we've got a real chance of seeing deluge type rain there. And in Wisconsin, we do see that. I'm gonna zoom in on the five-year max because I feel like this is where we see the signal most clearly, but it is conserved across the models that up towards Green Bay, up towards the Door Peninsula, we've got a big smash. But biggest issue is this line of storms, this line of extreme precipitation going through Madison and Milwaukee. In this figure, we're seeing 15 to 20% more rain per storm event coming in on this line that looks like it's coming in from the west and gonna kind of break against the lake. Big pattern there, big weather pattern. Now, Wisconsin's lake cities can handle weather. I know y'all are tough. And I think Wisconsin cities on the lake there, you got a great potential future looking at these projections overall. But if you saw 20% more rain in a big storm, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's good to know what's coming and get the infrastructure in shape. You all have cities that could grow, that could grow in a healthy way. And that's what we're seeing there in that figure 2.12 is what your big resilience challenge is to go alongside that local opportunity. When we look at the flooding damage projections, this is in figure 110. This is the increase in flooding projection damage in the US. We can see that uh, there's a projection for increased flooding in Wisconsin due to some riverine flooding and that most of the increased flood damage projections follow that storm map, right? Particularly up as we get into the Door Peninsula. There is another challenge we need to talk about in Wisconsin. Let's look at figure 7.4, the fire map. So don't get alarmed as we're looking at 7.4. This thing is hard to read. Look, this dark color, it doesn't mean constantly on fire. It means change in number of days expressed as a percentage. Very helpful and natural way to express a number, right? But I did the math for you between this figure and this figure. So what we're talking about in terms of your on the ground experience from the risk level in this map is that your danger of fire under these current change conditions, it's gonna be more like California's danger of fire was before the year 2000. So people in Wisconsin are gonna to need to become aware of fire and landscapes are gonna to need to be managed against fire. But you know, before 2000, you didn't see so many of these terrible fires we've seen those last 20 years in the West. I talked with staff at the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission about fire as a landscape management tool in this area. Because you know, I'd never heard of being used in these forests by the lakes. And I learned that fire is a traditional indigenous land management technique, even up in the North, and that it's healthy for many of the native species. Blueberry shrub, I learned that'll often fruit better after a controlled burn. I think it's important. We see this emerging fire threat. We don't look away. We face it. We look at what's in our toolbox. We get ready. Got another challenge point to address. One more challenge point. And that's if you're concerned about water availability. So this is figure 24.12. You can see that Wisconsin doesn't have absolute groundwater coverage, but it's pretty good groundwater coverage across much of the state. If you're a place that's hoping to welcome people in, you gotta keep an eye on your water quality and on your water capacity. Wisconsin's outlook is very strong, but you don't wanna take on more than you can handle. If you live in one of those areas where everything is lining up, but you don't have a solid aquifer under you, Particularly if you're in the middle of Wisconsin, you got to think about what you want your future to look like. Get on top of your zoning. Think about growth in a responsible way, a way that protects the land, that protects your capacity to farm. Wisconsin's agricultural land is absolutely wonderful, and it's absolutely crucial for us all. We need to keep Wisconsin's agricultural land producing food for America. Wisconsin! You're looking great. There are challenges in your future for sure, but there's also tremendous opportunity.
This is one of the most balanced outlooks that I've come across as I'm reviewing the NCA5 and the projection changes for states across the country. There is a lot of hope here. You can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready. Folks, thanks for being here with me. The support for American resiliency is just incredible. People have given so much to this project. It's the reason why I'm able to keep doing it. I want you to know this uh, last month is the first month that we are off the runway. We are on target to being able to be with you, keeping an eye on the news, trying to get you the information you need indefinitely. Thank you so much for everyone here with me. Talk to you again soon.